But as I thought about 19 years ago when God definitely led me to this spot to begin this church, God saved me in January the 19th, 1964. 19 years ago this past January, at that time I did not own a Bible. I had not been inside of a church in about 15 years. And God saved me and I knew immediately what God wanted me to do. And at the age of 33 years old, I told my wife, I said, I don't know what you think about it, but in order to live, i got to preach. I'm going to preach. And I would not trade my position today with any man alive. I'd rather be pastor of this church and pastoring you people and being here with you is anything I know of. I have no aspirations for any other place of employment. But at that time, as I sold a business that I had and quit the place of employment where I was employed, and God led me out here to begin this church in an, a cotton patch. At Walnut and Jupiter then, there was only a service station then. Nothing between here and Walnut and Jupiter. We were out in the country, a little wall, hogback road. I did not have a vision of what's here today. Nineteen years ago, I thought, I know what God wants me to do. I want to preach. I did not understand God's leading to this particular place, but he did. But I have some goals for the future now. I've learned that a man that does not set goals does not know when he's arrived. And there's a verse of Scripture that has every morning this week as I began to run before daylight. There's a verse of Scripture that has bothered me. You find it in Matthew chapter 19. No use turning there. I'll quote it for you. In verse 26, our Lord was speaking concerning the salvation of an individual. They came to Christ, and Christ said to them, they said it's an impossibility for him to be saved. And our Lord said this. He said, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And I look at what God has done in the lives of literally thousands of people. Last night, I told a number of people, as I met some folks that used to be members of this church that I love with all of my heart, and I said, if I'd ever learn how to keep people, don't tell them what God would do. If I would get rid of my rough character and I would really become godlike and godly, no telling what would happen. Literally thousands of folks have been saved here in this ministry. I can remember the time when we built a little 30 by 40 building and I literally preached to them standing on the outside looking through the windows. God has blessed. But as I was running this morning again before daylight, a verse of Scripture continued to enhance my mind. I did not know the address, and as soon as I got back home, I went to my study and looked it up. And it's found in Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 29 and verse number 18. Where the writer said, where there is no vision, the people perish. I've got a vision. I've got a dream for God here on this property. And not only on this property, but throughout the entire world. As I began to survey our ministries and briefly review our total ministry, our Sunday school growing at an astounding rate. Two morning worship services now. I think about the Dallas Life Foundation, one of the greatest things that God ever lead, led us to begin. 
feeding at the present time more than 6,000 meals every month. They're a ministry downtown Dallas for the doped, the drunkard, the unlovely, the abused child, the battered wife. I'm thankful that we can open doors and open arms and tell them God loves you. Amen. I think about the Toller Children's Home. A year ago, just an idea, a vision, a goal in my mind. In October of last year, I shared it with some men that are in this service this morning. And now the Toller Children's Community, a reality. Places be, will be built for 160 the abused and neglected boys and girls where they can go and be fed and taken care of physically and mentally and emotionally. And then that we can tell them that God loves you. You'll recall, as you read in the paper, we made application to the Planning and Zoning Commission here in Garland for a twin tower to sit right out here, two seven-story buildings to house elderly folks that seemingly no one cares for and no one loves. And you pick up a newspaper today and you'll see how a ministry like that is needed. I was out of the city and I returned and I learned that the Planning and Zoning Commission had put us on a 30-day hold. It had made almost all of the papers two or three times and I said then, I'll never fight with the city over a zoning issue. A moral issue, yes! But a zoning issue, no, and I, we withdrew our application. Not knowing at that time that God was working in all of it. Since that time, I was in a meeting with the directors of the Toller Children's Community and the directors of the Dallas Life Foundation and 15 and a half acres more land came up for sale right next to our children's home. They told me, said, preacher, buy it. And Ali has already got the contract at the title company. The papers will be signed October the 3rd of this year. And we'll have 30 acres out there, not only room enough for our children's home, but also room for a retirement center. And it'll not have to go up. It can go out. God knows what he's doing. Someone said, are we ever going to stop? No. Just this week, I took a letter opener and I like to get those envelopes that are dark blue and gray and light blue. They're pretty. And have an F on them in two mountains. I took a letter opener. Always, secretary always lays that one on top. Big stack of mail. And I took that one, throw the rest of the mail. I said, you open this. I'll open this one. It was on my desk Tuesday of this week. I took the letter opener and slid it. Took it out and there, a letter and said, Preacher, three and a half acres of land at 2100 in the 2100 block of Apollo Road, just a rock's throw from here. It's yours. I want to give it to the church. Do something with it. That put me to praying. The next day, I told Danny, I said, Danny, I'll tell you what I want to do there. I went over and drove the neighborhood out with Mr. Kilpatrick and also then my wife and I went over there at night and rode the neighborhood out. And I said, I believe what's needed here are so many young ladies that their husbands have left them and they've got little kids. And they must work in order to make a living and no real good place to put those little kids. And I said, I'm going to build a preschool and a kindergarten and a place to where I can go in and take those little kids and put them on my knee. They may not have a daddy that loves them, but they've got a God that loves them, and I want them to have a preacher that loves them. Yeah. And so that'll be happening. 
I'm excited about what, is, what God is doing. There are many areas of burdens today that are heavy and in the time when men's souls are tried and there's frustrations and there have been defeats and there's waiting and there's spiritual battles to be fought. But our great God will give us a victory. So I'm excited about it. This morning, I thought about setting some goals, and I think you've lost me on this microphone or something. I thought about setting some goals, and I have set some goals. Without a vision, the people perish. All things are possible with God. I thought about as I opened the word of God, there's a man in the Bible named Noah. Noah lived in times when there'd never been a boat built before. In fact, it had never rained before. And God said to Noah, Noah, build an ark. Noah didn't even have a blueprint. He didn't have an architect. God said, Noah, build an ark. And the Bible said that Noah moved with fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Can you imagine for 120 years that Noah was ridiculed? He was laughed at. He was made fun of. They said, oh, crazy Noah, it'll never rain. I've had people to say to me since the Jupiter Road Baptist Church has began, and I can go back yonder years ago, and folks would say it'll never work. But things that will not work with man are possible with God. Never do I read at one time that Noah ever wanted to quit. I do not read of any, any discouragement on Noah's part. I never see Noah being depressed and going to sit with a psychiatrist. But Noah had a girl, an impossible girl. And the Bible said Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And listen to me this morning. When we put God first in our lives, it might be impossible with man, but it's never impossible with God. Amen. So Noah built the ark. And I read where eight precious souls and the species of animals made entrance into that ark and God was the door of that ark and God do opened the door and let them in. God took care of, all, care of them all the way. And let me say to you this morning, any vision that we might have or any goal that we might set in the Jupiter Road Baptist Church, it might be a huge goal and impossible in the eyes of you and I but all things are possible with God Amen. I read of another man in the scriptures and there was Moses you'll recall that God used Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage an impossible and utterly impossible task here he was, and they were task makers. They were making brick, you'll recall. They had no great military force. They had no army. They had no cannons. These are the things that win battles. But let me say to you this morning, when we dedicate it to God, and it's a vision from God, all things are possible with God, and the battle is not mine and yours, but the battle is the Lord's. God's commandments or God's enablements. I think about Abraham. You'll recall Abraham, the father of our faith. And once again, the scriptures say without faith, it's impossible to please God. And if there's one thing I want to do, I do want to please you. But more than that, I want to please God. Abraham, the Bible said that God called him from Ur of Chaldeas. And Abraham left and he went out not knowing whether he went, 
But the Bible said he looked for a foundation for a city whose builder and maker was God. Ladies and gentlemen, when the Jupiter Road Baptist Church gets to the point to where we leave God out of it, that's when I don't want to be a part. But I thank God for the lovely spirit and attitude that is exemplified by this congregation. You're the greatest people that I know of anywhere, and I thank God for you. Abraham had an impossible goal. Noah had an impossible goal. Moses had an impossible goal. But with God, Jesus said, all things are possible. Amen. Let me say that the disciples, they had an impossible goal. A simple thing. Our Lord said this, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. A simple command. Go into all the world, yet... A monstrous task. I look around today, God, that has given you and I that same order. Go into all the world. Since the inception of the Jupiter Road Baptist Church in 19 years, she's given now almost $2 million to worldwide missions. You began to count the benevolence, and that does not count the benevolence. You see on our sign out at the Toller Children's Property, future home of the Jupiter Road Baptist Church, Youth and Benevolence, and I want to move that sign real quickly to the other three and a half acres. Benevolence! I still believe it's godly, and I still believe it's our responsibility to feed the poor. When we get to the place to where we don't reach out to that little one and let them know that God loves them, then we're failing God. You come go with me and follow me. And just again, this last week, I stopped in East Garland. And every time I stop there, my burden gets heavier. Little boys and little girls running up and down the streets over there have not had the opportunity that my children have had and your children have had. Maybe the son or the daughter of a drunkard that goes out and works all the week and then comes in and beats them and spends all of his money on liquor and dope and things like that. Those little kids didn't ask to be born to that parent. And we as a church that claims to be a church that loves people and loves souls, we have a responsibility to do something for God for those young people. Amen. After I leave for worlds unknown, over the border line, will I be missed by those I love? What will I leave behind? Leave behind, yes, leave behind. What will I leave behind? After I've gone to worlds unknown, what will I leave behind? Are we here just to exist or are we here to help our fellow man? Amen. Are we here to prosper? Are we here to make this place a better world to live? Somebody said that's not what Christianity is for. Christianity is to reach the laws. Honey, you better read the Bible. Amen. We are to reach the lost, but at the same time, we're to find a hurt and heal that hurt, find a need and meet that need. Amen. We're just beginning. I've never had a desire to build a big church, and you know that. And you that have been here any length of time have heard me say from this platform, I never want to pastor another church. I never want to start another church. This one's enough for me. Let me say I've eaten those words and I've swallowed them and I've digested them real well and I do want to start another church and I do want to pastor another church and my plans today is to start at least two more. 
I plan on starting a church at Fuller Children's Community. When it's built, there'll be a 350-seat auditorium out there, and we're going to use it for the glory of God. Amen. Just this last week again, and I have driven it I don't know how many times, from 635, or from Lake Ray Hubbard, at Faulkner Point, where the heliport is, you get in your car, and you drive to 635, and I asked Danny here two weeks ago, I said, how many condominiums are there? He said, in excess of 10,000. And there's more than that being built and on the drawing board. That doesn't count the houses that are being built and drive up and down Interstate 30, and there's not one church. God's help, I've got to go. i got a dream. Wouldn't it look pretty over there? I've already named it. I've already named that one the Toler Children's Community. Somebody said, Killer told me this week, I, bet I share my dreams. If I tell people with them, just like when I quit smoking, oh, how I loved them things. Man, I'd hide and I'd smoke one. And, oh, I love, I still can smell one and I'll walk. Right? <laughs> Man, I, somebody say, they have a hold on you? Honey, they still got it. I like a good cigarette. <laughs> now, I hadn't smoked any in 19 years, but I like them anyway. <laughs> but when I quit smoking, I told everybody I saw I'm quitting smoking. Then, <laughs> see, I had to quit. <laughs> if you want to quit something, that's the way to do it. Tell all your friends. I've learned that works. I have been trying to talk somebody into starting a church at Plano, Texas for five years. Buddy, she needs one. I helped start one church at Allen, and I've been trying for two years to talk someone else into starting a church there. The president of First City Bank, not First City, First Bank Rowlett, CE right here. Boy, I love C.D. What a blessing he is. C.E., I want you to know I love President Chamber of Commerce, Rowlett, this year. Going to be mayor next year. <laughs> now, see, I told you all this, and telling him this in front of you all, now he's got to run. <laughs> I've already talked to him about it. But I told C.E., I love Rowlett, Texas. I've, God's given me a love for it. I've ridden all over that place, no telling how many times. I've even gotten out on property and prayed out there. And, brother, I believe that Rowlett, Texas, if it has the right leadership in government out there, is going to be the number one city in this part of the country within 10 years. I've told several that. And she needs a church. I've been trying to talk people into starting them. No one to start one, so I'm going to. My wife said, where are you going to find time to do all of this? It's still 24 hours in a day. And God's given me some pretty good heifers. Look out there. I need you to help me. I look around now, and you see this morning, and I got on the telephone and called a... Mr. Moore back there this morning, I said, don't put any more in the balcony. I see her swaying in the center. <laughs> when she begins to sway, y'all, if it begins cracking, y'all get out of the way back there. <laughs> in a normal service now, we'll not be able to handle all of our people in one service, just in a normal service. It would pack this building out. You cannot build a church and keep people coming the way they're stacked in here this morning. I've never had a desire to build a great big building. I don't need a great big building. In fact, I enjoy living the house I live in. I enjoy driving the automobiles I drive. I enjoy these clothes that I got on. Boy, I'll tell you, I enjoy wearing them. I enjoy eating good food. But you listen to me this morning. I enjoy them because I'm already happy. They don't make me happy. And if I had to, I'd give them every one up to serve God. We was making application for 
licensing for our children's home and the head of the licensing department for the state of Texas drove on our property. Also the head of the placement division drove on our property. Mr. Kilpatrick and I, he sat there well, all, nearly all time with his eye raised up. We went to eat and Perry was there and Perry kind of raised his eyes at him. But you know, time we got back here to the church, I was real friendly with him. They went in my office and sat down. They said, we thought we, they got teasing a little bit. They said, we thought we was in the wrong place when we drove on your property. Back then, that was before some fellas gave this driveway out here and before when chug holes you could fall off in them. One day I come in and my secretary's lost in a chug hole. I saw her hand waving as I come in and said, help! She said, what y'all doing? said, I thought I was the wrong place. She'd got stuck in one of them jug holes. Didn't she, Mr. Kilpatrick? You're <laughs> I told her, I said, we don't build, spend our money on buildings. We don't. But we're at the place that demands something special, not to honor us, but to honor God. God needs to be honored in the city of Garland. You say, well, what you gonna build? I'm gonna build a building. God's going to help us, he already is. And we're going to build a building that will honor God. You know, when they began to build a temple back thousands of years ago, that was back when you, <laughs> they worked for a penny a day. You know how much they spent on it? Ten million dollars. Back then, I say if you're going to build something to meet God in, you ought to build something nice. God deserves the very best. Turn those lights off, will you please? Mr. George Hicks in the building this morning. George, are you here? Oh, here. George, come on. Will you please? I want to introduce you all to a very, very precious man. Mr. George Hicks with Hicks and Tomlinson Associates. George, just have a seat there, if you will. I want to introduce you in just a minute. I met with our trustees, and I'll tell you, I thank God for our trustees. What a great group of men they are.
It's a chapel that seats 350 people. Will be used for Wednesday night service for funerals and weddings. In between that is the preschool department. And then the big building in the back of the auditorium is a gymnasium. And I want that gymnasium, George, to where we can bring our old folks out here and put them through an exercise program and let them go in there and sit down in a hot tub. Get them sit down, boy. Boy, you put your back back to it. If I ever get rich, I'm going to have a hot tub in my house. centuries you you study the history of the church we've taken a back seat but we ought to lead in society you mentioned the word social today people back up that ain't a bad word that's a good word if I don't minister to you socially and help you to grow socially then I'm failing God I remember the time it hadn't been mentioned this morning I hope it's not mentioned today but I remember the time when we came out here and started this church and I didn't draw a salary for the first two years and we nearly starved to death. And V.E. Morgan that just passed away here a few months ago gave me some of his suits to wear. I never had a suit when I started preaching. I hear preachers say, oh, I give up this. Man, I've gained everything. I've got more than I've had in my life. Can't get rid of all I've got. But I remember uh, V.E. Morgan used to give me some of his clothes to wear. And he wore a short and I wear a long. <laughs> you ever tried to dress a, a long fella in a short suit? <laughs> Don Blunt will remember I went and bought a suit that cost $29.95. I had no perception of colors whatsoever. It was green on the outside and had a red lining. You remember that? <laughs> Back then, nearly every service, we didn't have much building. There was always scattered around. Brother, I'd throw that red line and open like that, and every bull in that congregation running me. <laughs> what I'm saying is this. God's given us a vision. God's given us a vision. Five years ago, I'd have thought, hey, that's not possible. It's not possible, but now I not only think it's possible, it's going to be a reality. Amen. And the amazing thing, when we walk through the doors and they hand us the keys, the thing's going to be paid for. Amen. You say, preacher, where's the money coming from? I won't have a member of this church to participate. Amen. And I myself will be talking to you and asking you personally to participate. I have not completely organized with the trustees yet and the staff the form of money raiser we'll use, but possibly we'll have some banquets here at the church in small groups. Do you know now we don't even have, we have a fellowship hall over there that'll seat 250. We cannot even gather for a church social, have not been able to in years. That's not right. I can go out this morning and count my automobiles on the parking lot and figure up just the insurance policies alone for one year and it'll be enough to nearly about build this building. If I were to count the prices for them and the payments on them, honey, we could buy garland. <laughs> what I'm saying, I'm going to ask everyone to be a part. It's exciting. I'm excited about it. I told Janet, Janet, you in the balcony, that myotherapist? Yeah, she was up there working last night. I said, I hadn't been able to sleep a wink in about two or three uh, weeks. I said, maybe two and a half, three hours a week. I said, I'm just going around like this. And she touched a little old bone back there on me now, like that. <laughs> she said, it's not hurting you to go. Keep going. Just exercise. I went home then and ran to him. I felt good. I told her I came back. I said, I feel good. I'm excited about it. It's what I'm saying, folks. This will honor God. There will not be a building like it, George, in Dallas.
Dallas County, will they? George Stand, and this is Mr. George Hicks. I want y'all to meet him. Give him a good hand. George is not only a great architect, he's a fine Christian. George, stand up just a minute. Tell him a little bit about the building, will you please? Come on. Yes. Amen. And George, come on right here, George. Get right there. Uh, you'll be proud to be a part of this congregation when it relocates in this new facility. We'll probably be doing it on a phase basis so that it won't happen all overnight, but you'll you'll enjoy it and the Lord will bless you. The main thing we need is to win souls and make a witness for Christ. And you can do that here at Jupiter Road Baptist Church. The building itself, as far as the details, there, uh, it, it looks uh, really nice. I think so. Don't you look think it looks nice? <laughs> it doesn't look like Jupiter Road Baptist Church, but uh, it's, it's what it's going to be, and I know you're going to enjoy it. Thank you, George. thing I think Mr. Hicks and his the people that work for him have just done a fabulous 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 job do you think so uh, somebody said preacher how much is that going to cost it'll cost a lot more than that I don't know how much more it'll cost a lot more than that and I want you to be a part of it now, the reasons I want to build this building, and I'll close it out real quickly, is number one, it's needed. I'm not only thankful to be a Christian, but I'm thankful to be a, an American, a Texan, and a Garlandite. It'll honor God, it'll honor our city, it'll honor our church, it'll honor the congregation. And so I want to build it because it's needed, number one. Number two, I want to build it where we can add more souls. I think last Sunday, how many did we have? Now, I mean, how many did we have saved? How many professions? 28. 28. With growth like that, it's not going to be long till the first service and second service will not be able to meet in this auditorium. I want to build it because I believe with all of my heart I've been around in this community. And folks, the day that that building is built, let me tell you that they'll start coming. You'll see souls saved. You'll see Christ lifted up and honored. And it'll do another thing. It'll pull our church together as never before. I want to be a part of it. If there's one thing I want to do, I want to see the gospel go out and souls saved. There's people in this service this morning. If you were to die right now, you'd go to hell. No reason for anyone going to hell. Christ died in our place. I invite you this morning, God's Salvation is given to whosoever will come to him. A man said, well, I'll study the Bible, then I'll get saved. You don't have to have a great intellectual capacity of the Scriptures in order to come to Jesus Christ. There's four simple things you need to know. Number one, you're a sinner. All men, everyone that comes into this world are sinners. Number two is that sinners, when they die... There's only two places, heaven and hell. And a sinner does not gain heaven, but he spends eternity in hell. Number three, you need to know that God loves you and sent Jesus Christ to die in your place to pay for your sins. And number four, if you'll come to him right now, he'll take you and impart to you the divine nature of Almighty God. Let's stand together. Heavenly Father, we are thankful indeed for the Word of God and for every promise in it. And in this great crowd, Lord Jesus, 
I know there's people that have never trusted Jesus Christ. Maybe this is the first time they've been in a service like this in a long time. And Lord, it always bothers me when I have to motivate or present a plan and don't get to present the just pure, unadulterated gospel. But this morning, there's been enough scripture given here to save the vilest and wickedest sinner out. I pray just now that nobody will leave this building lost and die and go to hell. But I pray, Lord Jesus, that you might have your way in their life and they might come this morning trusting thee. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'm going to ask you a question in just a moment that will demand an answer. I want you to search yourself before you answer this question and know beyond a shadow of a doubt whether you're saved or not. Right where you are this morning, if you were to die right now, do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you'd go to heaven? If you can say yes, I want to see your hand. Put it up good and high. And say yes, I'm saved. Thank you very much. Heavenly Father, thank you for these good number in this room with me this morning that can attest to the fact that they're saved. But Lord, it bothers me that some cannot say I'm saved. So Lord Jesus, this morning I pray that this would be the time that they had come to thee. Remembering what Jesus said, that as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I pray just this time, might this hour might be the hour, dear Lord. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. You couldn't raise your hand a moment ago, but you don't want to go to hell. God don't want you to go to hell. He loves you so much that he gave Jesus Christ. Right where you are, would you slip that hand up and say, Preacher, I don't know, but I don't want to go to hell. Would you pray for me? Slip it up just long enough for me to see it. God bless you. Yes, right here. Would there be others? Yes, God bless you right there. Others say, I don't know whether I'm saved or not. Please pray for me. Anywhere, downstairs, down on the main floor first. You'd say, pray with me, preacher. Right where, right where you are, slip it up just a moment. How about up in the balcony? That balcony's packed this morning. Yes, I see that hand. Would there be another one? Say, please pray with me, preacher. I don't know what I'm saved not. Yes, I see that hand. Would there be another one? Would there be another one? Heavenly Father, for Jesus' sake, I pray you'll save everyone in this building that's unsaved. I pray this would be the time that they would come forward and make their peace with God through Jesus Christ. Oh, God, don't let a one say no to the wooing of the Holy Spirit of God. But may they begin right now to step out in these aisles and come forward trusting thee. Heads are still bowed and eyes are closed. I wonder if there's one here this morning. Should say, Preacher, I want you to pray with me about a church home. I really don't have a church home. Pray with me about a church home. Right where you are, would you slip your hand up? Yes, God bless you. One right here. Yes, God bless you. One there. Yes, God bless you up in the balcony. Yes, God bless you. Others, yes, down on the main floor. You'd say, pray with me about a church home. You're in the building of the greatest church in the world this morning. As I said, I never had a desire to build a big church, but I've always had a desire to build a great church. And you're in a great church this morning. God has visited this people. I open the doors of the church. We'll receive you any way the Bible bears out. I'd invite you. Come on right now. And you that raise your hand com concerning salvation, don't procrastinate. Don't put it off. You're here this morning. The Holy Spirit of God's dealt with you. Come on right now on the first verse of invitation. You up in the balcony that uh, raise your hand about a church home, I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. I want you to come. Heavenly Father, for Jesus' sake, I pray that you'd add to us this morning these that are here that do not have a church home. God, add them to us. Bless this, your invitation, for Jesus' sake. Amen.
my grandson you're sitting by. That's my oldest daughter. I won't even bring him up here. This is my, I'm going to start a church for this boy to pastor. Steve is the associate pastor there and the music director. I want Steve and Laurel to come to the platform, please. This is my other son-in-law and my oldest daughter, and we're just real glad to have, uh, I think a man's family is the greatest thing that ever happened to him. Of course, the rest of my family is members of this church here. But here's uh, one of the greatest couples. Steve's a good preacher. You've heard him preach. He's an excellent preacher. And so uh, I'm glad they're here today. Maybe for too long, they'll be here all the time. And uh, got your college class here from Lufkin. Will you stand, please? College class from Lufkin. Uh, and Mr. Wayne Smith. Wayne, Wayne, you came over yesterday, took your time, and Danny's helicopter, and carried these kids on a ride. I want you to stand. Wayne Smith. Yeah. There he is, kids. He looks different today, doesn't he? Yeah. And so I wanted to show you all my kids that you don't get to see very often. And <laughs> fellas got on his tuxedo, hadn't he? <laughs> all right. Uh, we're going to have lunch. I want to meet with all of the trustees. And uh, it'll be an impossibility now with all the staff, but I want a picture of myself with all the trustees, and then I want some special pictures. We'll meet in the television room over there. We'll go and have lunch here in just a moment uh, out under the tent. We want everybody to stay. There's enough food. We bought I don't know how many turkeys and hams and uh, so forth and fried chicken and everything. I want all of you to stay and uh, have lunch with us. Dr. Charlie Cottrell, I want you to come to the platform because I want you to ask the blessings over the food here in just a minute. Come on up and sit down. And we're delighted you're in the service. I'll tell you a great man.
but there's the best Miami Dolphin that ever lived right there. I guarantee you. And then where's John? John, you stand up. John, you stand up. What a blessing John Holland's been to me. Stand up, John Holland. I love you. John played for the New York uh, Buffalo, Bills. Buffalo Bills. Made five. I watched him on television. Uh, John's a wide receiver, and he'd grow across that line with a football under his arm, and I'd holler, get him, and run in that television. I'll tell you. <laughs> John's all right. John, I love you, and I'm glad you're here. I'm delighted. I see Les back, Lance back there. Lance is, uh, Lance is a banker now, former tennis pro. Lance, I'm glad you and Ron are in the service. I appreciate you. How did the score go last night? I worked until about midnight. How did, what happened? The Cowboys got beat? Would y'all pray for the Cowboys this afternoon, please? <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I'm glad you're here. We'll go out and uh, uh, the food will be ready out there. I'll meet the trustees real hurriedly. And uh, I can't get all the staff now. But staff, if you would, don't leave this afternoon until I get a picture uh, of you. Uh, so all of the staff, I need a picture of you. There will be no service tonight. As soon as lunch is over, we'll begin singing in the auditorium with Mike and Judy Talley and the choir and some other special singers. We've dismissed the evening service tonight, and uh, so you come back for the singing. I think you'll enjoy it. Be some, be some good singing, and uh, give us an opportunity to visit another church tonight and see what's taking place in another church, maybe. But I'm glad you're here. I want uh, uh, Mike Talley to come. And I want you to sing the Lord's Prayer. And then I want one of the greatest men of God that's ever been in Garland, Texas, Dr. Charlie Cottrell. I want him to come after Mike sings the Lord's Prayer. And I want him to uh, uh, ask the blessing on the food over there and you'll go out. The folks that are in the steel chairs, would you do me a favor? Would you stand just while he's singing, please? And that way they'll get the steel chairs out of the hall to where when we dismiss and then Dr. Charlie will come and if y'all will y'all can sit on those long pews back there for his room and uh, I really appreciate that Mr. Mike Tiley is going to sing the Lord's Prayer wait a minute you want to introduce real hurriedly preacher today we have Don Porter coming for a profession of faith Don you come stand here hey, no let's just let him be seated Rob because uh, Terry Lovelady is coming for a profession of faith amen and Ron Broadway is coming transfer of leather. And Timothy McKay is coming for transfer of leather. And John John Hoxon came for baptism. Amen. Everybody that's happy about that, say amen. amen. And I want to be a blessing to you. Day or night, if you need me, you call me. Mr. Mike Talley.
said I could say a word. As he said, I have been pastor of First Baptist Church here 28 years, started six churches. But I want to tell you people, I have not known of a pastor anywhere that has done more than your wonderful pastor. Let's give him a good hand. Let us pray. Father, how we thank thee for this great hour. And Lord, we thank thee for this wonderful pastor. This could not have been possible had it not been for God working through a man that had great vision, who looked out on the fields that are white unto harvest, willing to sacrifice, willing to give himself unstintingly to make this hour possible. Thank you for the wonderful message, for this beautiful music. Lord, bless the food to the nursing of our bodies. And may we go away today giving glory 